Hi, everyone. I'm Jefferson Novicki, and I live in Freeport. I'm going to read uh, two poems to you. The first one is called The Boomin' Birds, and I consider it an example of cli fi I'm not sure if you know what that is or not, but science fiction and climate change kind of mashed into one thing. Uh, and I think about it as if there's a soundtrack to this particular poem, it would be um, sort of like Godzilla or um, an episode of Black Mirror, if you know that, uh, mixed with maybe the Golden Girls or uh, on Golden Pond or something like that. So uh, think about that uh, as I'm reading this poem. It's called The Boom and Birds. One, we found ourselves after the flood in the bird business, which boomed like nobody's business. Nobody quite knew why birds came through better than any other animal, but they did. Birds became the new dogs, the new kids, the new clouds. They littered the sky, but no one could argue about the opportunities they offered. It was a whole new world. Two, we put up the platform above the trees, gave up the house and moved up there for good. Rob was good with his hands and I cultivated my feather brain, became one with the birds. Below, there would soon be too much water anyway. Rob peed off the edge of the platform, vertiginous. Three. It was the bigger birds that boomed. Eagles and albatrosses and a new thing like a pterodactyl, but uglier. To be revolutionary, you have to be a little bit stupid. Be a cross between an air traffic controller and a Pied Piper, a flying feather singer. Once they landed, Rob trapped them and I whacked. Four. To survive on birds alone is to eat hollow bones, a house whose home is just air once you get through the hair wall and crunch down to the core. Barely enough wind there to keep the doors open, barely enough sing to survive. We need a bunch of souls to sustain one soul in this wild world, above the water and be beneath the blue, stuck up in the air, fishing for wings. And then the second poem uh, is called The Library of the Forest. And it was, um, take, the title is uh, from an artist, Spanish artist named uh, Miguel, Miguel Angel Blanco, I think. Uh, and he, he has an amazing art project. It's called the Library of the Forest. Uh, but my wife had saved that little phrase uh, for a date that we went on a, a little while ago. And then we went to this new Mexican restaurant that, um, if I remember right, they ran out of guacamole at 5 p.m. on a Friday night and the margaritas were terrible, uh, but the best part is that I got this poem out of it, and it's called Library of the Forest. One. Many years ago, when it was first put here by those who believed in the magic down the moss, the words formed by lichen that told of how it used to be and how to keep the green green and the tilt in the rock, we were not alive. We found it like this. Two, the books live well in the library of the forest. We haven't added anything. We didn't think it needed it. And so our stewardship is to read on the mossy reclines to make our way through the volumes left to us. I have taken science and she has taken literature and we will meet in the middle where the birch has been below the rotted pine. She tells me what I've missed I read to her my favorite passages earmarked with a sap cluster that will last for a very long time, but the forever we have always envisioned does not forever as no forever does, and so we must plan. Three, we don't know who, who will find the library after we've gone. We wish we could know, could find the right people to take over the task of green and reading but we haven't seen anyone for years upon years, just deer and squirrels 
in the occasional edible mushroom that by now feels like a fellow living creature. We're tired, but we're not done yet, but soon will be. We know the library could sit dormant for years, and of course, we worry, but we tell ourselves we found it once, by chance, and so can others. It only takes the few to carry on the work of reading, of holding this living thing in your heart. 